Assalamu alaikum students. Uh, before we start the humanistic approach, I would like to remind you of what we covered during the previous two weeks. Uh, we went through the behaviorist approach in which we learned about Pavlov classical conditioning and Skinner's operant conditioning, uh, uh, reinforcement versus punishment, how reinforcement it could be scheduled, and how as an English language teacher you can shape your students' behavior. We ended up with applications and evaluation as usual. Today we will cover the uh, some of the uh, humanistic uh, approach uh, um, uh, uh, views uh, in which you will learn about Rogers, Carl Rogers' uh, theory and how his, uh, his views uh, are translated into the classroom uh, with the applications and evaluation of the humanistic approach. The humanistic approach uh, was actually uh, a reaction or opposition to the behaviorist approach. Remember, the for the behaviorism, behavior is the sum of many simple stimulus response connections, uh, where the focus was on observable behavior, right? So the focus here uh, for the humanistic is uh, the individual's mental private world. And the founding father of the humanistic approach is Carl Rogers, which, uh, sorry, uh, who is considered a leading figure in the development of humanistic approaches to education. Actually, um, his contributions are outstanding in the fields of education, counseling, psychotherapy. Um, uh, also, arguably, he is the most influential therapist in the 20th century. According to Carl Rogers, a child learns because he or she is innately ambitious and drives her reward from the sense of achievement. Um, let's go again to this. According to him also, behavior can only be understood from one's point um, of view, his own point of view. Right, so um, before we start uh, he talking about his therapy, um, I would like also to note that according to Carl Rogers, if the child feels good about herself, then she is a positive, this is a very positive start, then she would involve an understanding of her strengths her weaknesses and her beliefs in her ability either to succeed or to improve right so for him the main goal of human existence is self-actualization becoming all what we are capable of becoming what does this mean he argues that the individual sometimes he's called uh, the client when he or she feels valued prized in his in this case he's talking about the therapist if the individual feels valued and accepted by the therapist who communicates to uh, his safe and secure environment he will also feel prized so when the client of this therapist is valued accepted and prized and he communicates in a very safe and secure environment he will start exploring his own inner experiences in this safe <coughs> and secure environment through a self exploration of his internal world this client can move towards self actualization and in this sense Rogers therapy is non-directed client-centered okay so here learning is can take place when we change the word client to an individual or to a student so if the student feels valued accepted prized and he's learning in a very safe secure environment with the teacher the student starts to explore himself and then eventually he will move towards self-actualization 
towards knowing his own strength and weakness and towards believing in himself in his capabilities and his ability to improve how is this theory uh, non-directive or client-centered or self-directed or self-centered as it is called why why is sorry how by giving control to the client or to the student so the teacher here passes a great deal of authority and becomes a facilitator did you notice that everything has been done by the student so why is the teacher considered a facilitator here simply because he the teacher then will concentrate upon the development of the child's self-concept he's not going to teach he's not going to do anything he's just going to facilitate self-exploration and the students learning about himself uh, Carl Rogers was interested in what learning was what learning felt like and what learning strive to be so when his views uh, are translated in, in, in education Carl Rogers argued that well this is uh, the part that you like we don't need any teaching no teaching should take place we can do without degrees so also we can do without exams or grades um, why why should we do a, uh, ca uh, what should we why should we pay attention or to do something that when the learner is only interested in the continuing process of learning he learns every day he also argued that people gather to learn when they only want to learn so no need for campuses no need for uh, institutions and the individual is in a lifelong process of learning and what we need to measure is only the inconsequential type of learning so again this is very heady stuff but the question remains to what exactly how this humanistic approach is translated in the classroom so actually the humanistic approach is considered an umbrella term that refers to several related approaches these approaches can be classified as the humanistic content curricula where teaching topics that are directly relevant to the students lives for example teach the students about drugs about awareness uh, sorry about drugs awareness about cooking about marriage life and the second thing is humanistic process curricula with the focus here on the whole student and uh, this includes teaching assertiveness uh, training uh, life skills the third one is school group structures where you can restructure the whole timetable and school environment in order to facilitate the humanistic teaching of just individual classes the what do we mean by school and group structure on the school level the classes should be opened and uh, meetings um, could be done outside and uh, alternative ways of assessment also uh, should be found on this class level the students exercise choice and control over activities so the students monitor their own progress and self-evaluation uh, the curriculum focuses on what the children are concerned about and focus is on life skills thinking skills combined with social skills for example sharing and communicating and this leads us to cooperative learning which one of um, uh, as Johnson et al on 
page 33 outline four components uh, regarding cooperative learning please read about positive interdependence where students work towards attaining common goal and sharing materials individual accountability interpersonal and small group skills development and face-to-face -face interaction which is a very essential part of this learning strategy um, emotional literacy classes is one uh, of the applications within the humanistic framework the the aim of the emotional literacy classes is teaching emotion skills not only acknowledging the role of feelings and emotions in learning so um, Goldman uh, on page 34 claims that such emotion literacy programs improves children's academic achievement scores and please and enhances schools ability to teach please read that on page 33 and do progress exercise 2.3 so what is some of the evaluation of humanistic approaches? The critics argued that it's ambiguous, very vague. The students learn only what they want to learn. Low achieving students are sometimes embarrassed and they, 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 um, Some students can waste time talking about irrelative matters, some dominate and others are ignored. Very time consuming and it's difficult for the um, new teachers uh, to uh, cope with specific uh, guidelines uh, regarding the humanistic approach. Okay, that's it um, for the humanistic approach. As usual, I put some questions for you. You need to read and match. Uh, for example, emphasis the role of feelings. Emphasis is on the role of feelings. Feelings must be incorporated into the learning experience. Is this the behaviorism or humanist humanism? Okay, so do from one to eight. This will be very beneficial for you and good luck.